Thank you for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Well, it's less than six months now until the governorship election in Ondo State. Already supporters and groups are already campaigning for who they want elected as their governor. Uh, the Loki Aida Tiwa campaign organization, Food Soldiers in the Diaspora Arm, um, has now urged residents, especially the youth, to support Governor Aida Tiwa's aspiration to achieve uh, his dream of restoring the state's glory. The director of Diaspora Matters for the group Honorable Daria Liu stated this in Akure, the state capital, adding that uh, this support became necessary following the governor's sense of accountability and frugal spending, saying Nigerians abroad have resolved to provide support for his governorship ambition, noting that um, Mr. Edatu appears to be the best candidate to bring about uh, the sustainable development needed to lift Ondo State out of its current pathetic and unfathomable condition. Joining us now from uh, the U.S. via Zoom is the Director of Diaspora Matters for Loki Aedatua Campaign Organization, Food Soldiers, Honorable Daria Liu. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast today. Right, so there are a host of um, names of uh, individuals who have thrown their hat in the ring, especially within the ruling APC. Of course, there's also the... Um, threat from the PDP and other opposition parties. But even within the ruling party, there's so many names. And tell us more on why Loki Aida stands out. Oh, thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Um, happy to be with you. Uh, my name is Honorable Daria Liu uh, from Ondo State. And I'm um, happy to be here. Uh, first thing first, um, Yes, there are a lot of uh, aspirants that have thrown in uh, their intentions and they, for the uh, governorship uh, position in the state. But however, these are individuals who are you know, respected in their own rights, mm -hmm. who have contributed to the state in one way or the other. But there must be someone that we believe we know is capable to carry on where the late uh, governor left, uh, Governor Kitty, may so rest in perfect peace. Uh, we've seen what the go what the present governor has done, um, what he has been, what he has re what he represents, and he has changed the narratives of electioneering in Ondo State. He brings everybody on board. He wants everybody to come and contribute his quota. He periodically holds meetings with all the stakeholders and uh, seek for their opinions and the best way to move the state forward. And such a man, who is very, very humble, he doesn't claim to know everything. He asks, he calls everybody to a meeting, to a stakeholders' meetings, and they collectively and jointly they take decisions on how to move the state forward. And we've seen what he has done. As soon as he resumed, he cleared all the backlogs of uh, unpaid salaries and wages to the civil servants because he knows the conditions of the country. He knows the importance of having a varied civil service in the state. He needs to promote them. They have their own families as well. So we've been watching from afar, we look at what he, he intends to do for the state. And you know, the diaspora community is a very, very valuable asset in the developmental process in the state. Hmm. People living abroad don't just take decisions on sentiment and our emotions. They look at the facts. They look at your projects. They look at your policies and how these policies are, uh, how impactful they are on the lives of an average of those state citizens, in, uh, citizens and Nigerians in, in general. So we look at all this, and we look at the antecedent of those who are aspiring. We are not saying they are not good enough, but at this point in time, this is the man who is very competent, who knows what he's doing, 
who is ready to carry everybody along, who does not pretend about anything he wants to do. He calls everybody and people bringing their opinions on the table, and he takes jointly to take decisions that can move this thing forward. So we've seen in him a man who is very ready to take the challenges ahead. Thank you. Honorable, um, yes. this governor has, he has been the governor for an upward of three months now. And yes. you have mentioned one thing, which is um, paying um, uh, salaries, um, of course, some palliative to workers and um, clearing backlog. Okay. Of course, that's what a government is supposed to do. But what tangible things can you say he has done for the state in three months? What projects have you yeah, seen on ground that yeah, has made you. you believe that he is the man for the job? Okay, thank you. I was just, that is just the introductory aspect of it. Now, you know, uh, government is a uh, continuum. There's no uh, government in vacuum. As soon as he comes, he mobilized all the contractors that are presently, you know, having ongoing projects in the state, and he mobilized them back to, to site. Because, unfortunately, during the period that the late governor was sick, some people took things for granted because the governor could not be there physically to monitor or to direct the ongoing project. So everybody is to your tent to go Israel. Mm. But as soon as he resumed, he knew what to do. He called, mobilized all the contractors. He gave them a marching order to go back to site. And you can see the, you can see the, the, the consequences of that policy, of that action, of that directive. They all went back and the projects are ongoing. That is number one. Number two, uh, that's number one. Two, secondly, he gave directive for the release of about two billion naira uh, in form of loans, grants to petty traders, peasant farmers, and artisans. Because he knows the situations in the country. He knows what we are all facing. And more, I will not call it a palliative. I will just say this is a, this is a policy geared towards helping the families mm. to sustain themselves economically. It's not giving the money away. It's just a form of loan. People will be, you know, people will find one or two things to do. And without the economic activities of the state has picked up from the dormant that it was, it was very dormant before because everybody was, look, was looking for, everybody was looking for what to, where to go. Uh, there was no, there was no leader giving a directive on how to handle things. So, with that, you could see a lot of people praising this governor, a lot of people, you know, uh, keen up to say, oh, we are going to work for this man to continue where he stopped. Now, he went to see the president to have a robust discussion with Mr. President on how to solve some of the perennial problems facing the state. The Southern Senatorial Zone of this state of the state for years has been in darkness. He got an approval from Mr. President mm. to commence immediately the rural electrification project from that six local government that has been in perennial darkness over the years. So when you look at this man that has not been there for just three months and what he has done, you will say, wow, this is just the beginning of what good things to come. Again, he was in Abuja while others were paying policies. Mm. To have a discussion with Mr. President, I said, Your Excellency, Fred. the road between Akure and Ekiti, sister state, for economic purposes, that road is, un is unbearable. He got approval from Mr. President for the dualization of this road <clears throat> from Akure to Adwiti. These are just within three months. Office of being in, in, in Salud. And apart from that, the ocean surge from the southern senatorial uh, zone in the state that has given our problem sleepless nights. Now the federal government has again come to the rescue of the state mm. by coming in collaboration with the state effort to make sure 
people can can sleep, can live in their domains without problem from the ocean uh, salt. Okay, so honorable. So, yes. so honorable. So all of this you have mm. said. Um, there are people yes. who will say he is just doing that, just like campaigning. He's just campaigning, uh, and when he gets into office, he will do totally a totally different thing entirely. Do you agree with them? Yeah, my brother, let me tell you something. There's a saying in our place, in this Nigeria, that the money determines the day. Mm. The money determines the day. Here is a man who has just come in and said, look, I'm going to listen to my people. Gone are the days where somebody will be dictating to, uh, dictating to others, looting the state the ground. I know this is a collective government. Everybody will sit down and chat the way forward for ourselves. That's what we are saying. We are changing the narrative. Gone are the days where somebody will sit somewhere in one house will be dictating what is be happening in the entire state. But that is not the case. Hmm. They are not happy with that. They All want right. things to continue as it was. And we are saying, no, this is a new sheriff in, in town. Right, it's and uh, uh, Honorable Aliu, while, while you are rooting yes. for your preferred aspirant, uh, I missed, okay. um, you know, the plethora of names that we're already seeing. Uh, the, yes. the, there is the likes of, um, there are the likes okay. of the, the Kekemekes, mm -hmm. uh, Senator Ibrahim, the former Commissioner of Finance, uh, and, and all of that. You know, some have said, uh, beyond the fact that uh, Loki Aedatua is uh, the incumbent, uh, in terms of political structure, he doesn't appear to have built, um, you know, this much yet. Uh, and looking at the vacuum created by the uh, you know, sad passing of uh, former Governor Akire Dolu, uh, how do you defend uh, his, uh, you know, political might amidst, uh, you know, these, these options on ground and the fact that the party is even yet to uh, reach a, uh, a decision as to a consensus candidate? Uh, let, me, <clears throat> let me tell you, thank you for that question. Let me tell you something, my sister. See, of course we know this is a political season. We see all sorts of people. And uh, uh, without being immodest, I, I respect all the aspirants that put themselves forward. They are men of caliber of society. But however, what we are saying is that now, this is not the time to play politics with ourselves, with our future with the features of the generation yet unborn in other states. In those states, is a very peculiar state. Mm. This is a time where we are saying, this man that we have seen that is performing, that has been doing this within this short period of time, given one year, two years, three years, four years, the list will be endless. It will be commissioning upon commissioning upon commissioning of projects and valuable impactful policies that is bringing forward to the state. Mm. And it will be in our lifetime that we'll see a man who has undertaken to do things differently. So, concerning structures, uh, let me tell you something. We are all politicians. Human beings are structures. Masses, the people on the street, they are all structures. Politicians, they are part of the structures. Mm. Yes, we know. Look at, the, look at the scenario. Look at what is going on in the state. Campaign groups who are clamoring to be part of this thing. We have seen so many campaign organizations. Look at LACO, for instance. We brought ourselves together. We said, no, enough of rhetorics in this state. Let's do things differently. We taxed ourselves. We did collect money from anybody. We taxed ourselves. We put ourselves together. We put our resources together. We campaigned according to the local government of the state. Others were just criticizing, looking here and there, they don't even know where to start. But however, however, what is important is the people in our organization, the new Ondo state that you are seeing now, the people first. Right. Not, not me first, or not mm. or us, but first. Okay. first. That is where you see all sorts of organizations, people coming out in droves. Okay. This is not. Uh, this is a movement. This is no longer a political thing. This is a movement because people have seen that. Look at how God, in His own, uh, in, in His own wisdom, has brought this man to be our leader. Okay. So uh, with that, because those people are very religious people. 
Right. They have seen the they have seen the sequence, the circumstances that this man imagined. You know, and a very humble man, very peaceful, not a violent, loving man. No, it's a very easygoing governor who wants the, the who wants the best for that state. And mm -hmm. that's what we are saying. I left. I I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable here without being modest. But I left America to come home to come and participate. I want to give my quota. And so many others who have undertaken to say, no, this governor, we have to support him. Okay, and, and Honorable Aliu, how is your group yes. also reacting to uh, worries uh, from the APC camp uh, about uh, the governor's relationship with former governor uh, Olusha Gomimiko, which they say has kind of reflected in uh, the appointees or the appointments he has made of recent, uh, that these people, these um, you know, new officers in his administration are affiliated uh, with uh, former governor Mimiko. Yeah, here we go again. Here we go again. Let me let me tell you something. Well, when people, as I told you, when the governor called the stakeholders and said, "How do we move this state forward? We need people, competent people, to move this state forward." He, as at yesterday, he was still in the office till around two, two a.m. or three a.m. working on how to move this state forward. Bringing in competent people who can move the state forward. Gone are the days where we, we, we look for party party arrangements. No, competent people. It's not about uh, former governor Mimiko with due respect uh, dictating to it. No, these are people that can move the state forward. These are people that he brought together that they have the same vision that can move the state forward. It's not about. Um, uh, anybody dictate, they don't have anything to do. At this point where we are looking for how to make our people happy, what are the policies, who are the people who can pilot these projects? That this is the new era. Our people must at least enjoy the dividends of democracy. Some people are busy, busy talking about somebody brought the... We, we are not on that plane. We are not on that level. As I told you, is a collective decision. Everybody is happy with what the government is doing. Everybody is okay with the appointee. The appointment they have made so far, we're happy with them because we know these are people who are ready to do things differently. Differently. We don't want things to be done the usual way that there are no records. If we say, if we find out that Governor uh, Miracle has something that he has contributed before, and we are looking at that line of late uh, G G Governor Gabu has something that he has done before, and we are looking at that line that can bring the state forward. Or we look at our immediate past uh, governor, late Akiti. If we see some certain things that can move the state forward, we bring them together. This is not about politics. We are looking for people who will bring the state forward. The, those who are who are saying things against that, they have nothing to do. They have no ideas. They don't know what we are doing. They don't know where we are going to. They don't know the plans we have for the state. But they don't want that. What they want is a family government. Uh, me and myself and I, we said no to that. That era has gone. Nigerians now are looking. Nigerians now are looking at your policies. They want to see what you have. So gone are the days where somebody would just sit in one place and be taking billions of Nigerians now, especially for money, nobody is going to accept that. That is what the governor is saying no to. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, is your group too, uh, I'm sure you're following all the uh, news, uh, you know, circulating around this time as uh, the... Uh, the politicking intensifies ahead of the elections. There's also the certificate uh, controversy uh, hovering around uh, Governor Loki Ayedatiwa. What's your response uh, to these um, outcry? My, my sister, I, I don't want us to dissipate our energies on things that are, that are of no importance to the realities at hand. Certificates or no certificate issues has been attended to and been settled. So nobody is looking at that. We are not even going to dignify 
this uh, these people by replying to that. You, you are as a news for you to check certain things. If you are dissatisfied, you can go to court. If you are not happy, if you cannot see what is going on, if you are not knowledgeable enough to know that all these are being dealt with and trashed and thrown into the dustbin of history, we are not bothered about that. What we face, what this government represents, is the future of Uno State, not irrelevant issues about certificate. There, there, are, there are areas where there are channels where you can go to challenge it if you have any problem. What we are saying is these are the policies that we are uh, we're embarked on. These are what we want to do for the state. We want to move the state forward. We are not bothered about the uh, irrelevant things. When the time comes, we shall address that. So do we look forward to having you um, in Ondo State for to campaign for Ayeda Tiwa? Yes, I just left the state in about two weeks, and I'll be going back in about another one week or so. Okay. I'm already campaigning. I'm working. Uh, my, my, my job, as I said, I mean, the diaspora community, as I said, is a valuable asset. I'm going around, rallying around people uh, in, all over the world, all those state indigenous that are in the U.S., U.K., uh, in um, Finland, in European countries, telling them that this is the new sheriff in town. We have to support this man. And, you know, as I said earlier, the uh, uh, diaspora community, they are not sentimental people. They are not emotive. They base their the choices on facts. Mm -hmm. and, and physical things they can see, they can feel. And they have their people back home. They have relatives back home. They mm -hmm. have their parents back home. They have their sisters and they have their brothers back home. They are very, very important. They are integral, integral, integral part of the developmental process in any nation in any state, in any given society. So we have their followers that they can talk, they can advise, they can you know, appeal to, vote for this man, vote for that is what we are taking. We are, I'm taking this assignment very, very seriously. Right. I'll be going around, I'll be talking to a lot of people, and the, the response, the, the, the responses I've been getting is very, very supportive and educative, and that, that, that's why I'll be back home in about one week again to, to, meet, to, to, to join my colleagues making sure that we are going to get to the father and to the promised land. All right. Honorable Daria Liu, the director of yes. the Diaspora Matters no, for uh, Lokia Edatiwa Campaign Organization Food Soldiers. We thank you very much yes. for speaking with us. Thank, thank, you, for, thank you for thank you for having me. And right. uh, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. I want to be here anytime you want to. Right. You want to. Uh, yeah. And uh, on those state people, please, as I said earlier, this is a new man. In town, this is the man that loves you. This is the man that sleeps and wakes up thinking about right. how to move the state forward. And uh, God bless you. And uh, all other aspirants, I wish you all the best of love. All right. without right. Peter, <coughs> I respect everybody, but this is the man we want for the job. Right. Thank you. We'll see yeah. how it all.